question. So transcendental functions. And by transcendental functions, I'm meaning like y equals e to the x and also y equals 1 over x specifically um, for that problem. So before we get there, let's, let's, let's do a little review reminder of one of the easiest derivatives that we have in calculus, which is the derivative of e to the x. So what's the derivative of e to the x? Isn't it e to the x and then? That's it. The e to the, oh, that's it. e to the x. Times 1. Yes, it would be times the derivative of the baby, but the baby, that would just be 1. And what is the derivative of e to the ax? So it would be e to the ax times a? Yeah. So a times e to the ax, or you can do it as times a. I like to just put it out in front. So from these, it should be quite clear what our rule is for the integral of e to the x dx. So if the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, then what is the integral of e to the x? e to the x of e to the power of x plus c plus the constant of integration perfect and the integral of e to the ax dx would therefore be uh, a by e to the x plus c no oh it's a over e to the x no plus c. Think about what the work we did yesterday with the sine and cosine, right? This one is more meant for a, a knowing. Like if you can't, if you're having trouble with e to the ax, you could do a u substitution type of problem. But the idea is that this integral comes up quite a bit, and so we want to be making sure that we get comfortable with it. So the integral of e to the ax is well. First off, and I hope you would. I mean, I kind of heard this, and then I heard changes. There should be no doubt in your mind that there's some e to the ax. Copy and paste. If e to the ax is there, the e to the ax is in my answer. They're the same thing with the derivative. All right, so you, there's no fractions, there's no negatives, there's no just e to the, it's e to the ax. You're integrating e to the ax, you better have an e to the ax in your answer. But what, what is the other piece? It's not times a, because that would be a derivative. Would it be 1 over a? Yeah, it's 1 over a. You could think of it as divide by a, I guess. But like I said, I, that usually confuses me. 1 over a is the best way. Plus c. Plus c. And that's the rule that you're using. Of course, we can do the chain rule version. The e integral of e to the u du is e to the u plus c. So you will get problems in today's work for e's when and a lot of them will end up as e to the u and then of course you substitute back substitute back u now everything we've learned as well from our previous classes is still fair game so in this example let's see how you do the integral of x squared plus cosine of 3x plus e to the 5x dx. Now this problem could use substitution, but this problem is meant to be at the AP level, something that you can do in just step by step and knowing what the integral is. When the baby is a linear function, or even more specifically kx, then you should be able to integrate this in one smooth step. What do I get? Would you get one-third x to the power of three? Um, and then it would be oh, what's it called? Oh, plus good, sine. Good, good, good. It's positive. Good. good. Okay, so. Plus what? Still be sine. Okay. Okay. 
I forgetting something? Yeah, I'm three eggs. So instead of it being a uh, time, so it'll be one over three. Perfect. And then plus, okay. And then mm, I know it has something with e to the x. Uh uh-uh, uh. Could it be one over five e? To the power of five, yeah. five, five x. x. Yeah, so good. So Plus it's not. Eight. Yeah, you had said uh, e to the x, and so that was that was that I was saying. My like, ah. Uh. Now, if you want to put those that 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 one times one third at the end, that'll be perfectly fine. The times one fifth at the end of it, um, of of next to those transcendent or those functions, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you if you wanted to put over three, nothing wrong with that. Um, I just think that if you can get to the point where you're doing over three and you just go but sine of 3x over 3. And if you do that, um, all of it on over 3, and e to the 5x all over 5, you've probably already mastered it, which I don't think anybody has. You're not, you're not at that moment yet. All right? So we need to make sure we can get to there. But most importantly, we need to make sure that with the work we do, we do not make mistakes. Let's see how you do with this following example problem. What is the integral of 1 over e to the x dx? Let's see how the stuff I've taught you beforehand teaches you to do with this problem. So what do I get? What do I do? What do I get? Would you make it calculus friendly? Very good. The most common mistake that we get on this problem is that people try to do the answer as is, and they go, oh, the answer is 1 over e to the x. No, no, no. The integral of e to the x. This is not e to the x. This is 1 over e to the x. We don't like things in denominators like that by themselves. So this is the same thing as the integral of e to the negative x dx. Also, I get a lot of students that do the algebra, and all of a sudden they erase the integral, and they put like plus c right here, and they'll think that's the answer. Remember, when you do the integration technique, that's when you change your integral in dx to the plus c. If you haven't done that integration method or technique step, then you're not. You're, you're just doing algebra. And so what do I get now? Uh, negative e. Any negative e x. To what? Uh, power negative x. Negative x? Plus C. Plus C. Maybe you wanted to write that negative 1 over e to the x plus C. That's why you would see it as a multiple choice. Yeah, I would say the same. Okay. See how we do with this example? The integral of x e to the x squared dx. What do I do? Oh, um, would it be um, one over two? Nope. You might, your final answer might have that one over two, but I, I don't, I'm not jumping to answers yet. So no one over two in our next step. The final answer does have a one over two. I don't know if that's a coincidence of anything, but. Um, what do I do next? You've been doing it all week. But this is the derivative, right? Mm, well, I think I know what you're referring to. I want to say yes, but we don't call it that. Your 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 mind is at the right place. Baby. Uh huh. Yeah. So, what do we call it? Does anybody remember the name of this? Process? U. U substitution. That's called U substitution. Very good. So, what is U? Um. E. Nope. Oh, nope. No. Nope. 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 It cannot be E 
because then the derivative of e would be e. There's only one e in this problem, so the derivative, the u cannot be e to anything. It has to be x. No. Yeah, there we go. Did Jay say it all the way? X, say x. No, no, she was saying something else. That's what I was saying. Did you say something else in terms of, say it again, Ariana? Is it like x squared? Yeah, I x? thought I, I thought I heard you say x squared, um, but you paused for kind of you said x, and then I heard you starting to say the square at the end. So yeah, u is equal to x squared, x squared. We get these problems. We have two functions of x here. We have the x and we have the x squared. Oh well, first off, if you see something on the power of e, most likely nine times out of ten, that's going to be our baby, and so it. At this point in the course, in this point of how many use substitutions we've done in this week alone, you should feel comfortable identifying a, hey, A, this is a use substitution problem, and B, my U is X squared. So what is DU? So 2X. DUX. Yeah. Okay. Then, therefore? One half. Very good. We now get what? One half on the outside, the integration side. And then what do you have? EX squared? No. Oh, you're you. You're you. Mm-hmm. Would it be e to the u? There you go. E to the u. E to the u. Plus dx. D u. D u. All right. D u d. So there's a lot of commonalities of things that you know you've done things right. First off, you once you make this u substitution, it needs to be something that you are able to integrate as almost like a memorizational step. You should be able to go bam bam in that next step. You should also only have that one variable u. So when you're making in your, and that's why I do the arrows, you should only have u's. You shouldn't even say the word x's at all. And, and these are very, these are techniques. These are, these are steps and processes that can go through your mind so to know that you've done it correct. And therefore, my answer to this is? What's the integral of one half? What's the what's the answer to one half integral e to the u? Do you? You should be jumping at the chance to answer this one because it doesn't get any easier than this in this course of calculus. Yes, it is that obvious? Would it be? Um, would it be like one half parentheses e to the power of x squared? No, you're, you're, you're jumping. You're jumping. The inner, you, you want to make sure we're just doing that part first. So don't jump. If you jump the steps, it's it's it feels complicated. What's the integral of one half e to the u du? Well, it's one half e to the u plus c. The integral of e to the u is e to the u. Simple as that. And now we get that one half e to the x squared plus c. Now there's going to be lots of different babies. You might have square roots. You know, just I want to note. I'm not going to do all these examples because they're just you know you're going to see some of them on your homework and you just think that you might have something like. The integral of e to the square root of x over the square root of x dx, something like you know when we did with the square roots, you might see integral something like sine of x e to the cosine of x dx. You might see something like the integral of e to the one over x all over x squared dx. These are all problems that will lead to some constant times integral of e to the u du. They will all lead to some type of problem that after you've done your u substitution, you'll see it. And you can really recognize that they're going to end up as an integral of e to the u if there's only one singular e. If you see multiple e's, it's possible that e is the baby, and therefore it might turn into like a cosine or something else type of problem. 
But if you only see one E within the problem, nine times out of 10, it's going to lead you to an integral of e to the u du. Let's go to the second half of this lesson today. So remember, as a, re as a review, the power rule of integration was such that the integral of x to the n dx was equal to parentheses 1 over n, x, n plus 1, sorry, x to the n plus 1 plus c when n does not equal negative 1. If n was equal to negative 1 and you try the same thing, you would get the integral of x to negative 1 dx, which is equal to 1 over 0, x to the 0 plus c. You can see that this doesn't work when n is negative 1. Do you see why the rule states that n cannot be negative 1, first and foremost? How about let me say it the other way. Does anybody not see it? Does anybody feel that what I did is a lie and n can be negative 1? And use this, this rule. Okay, you still believe in me? At least that's how I'm taking it. So, if n equals negative 1, this is a transcendental. And what I mean by that is if you can re remember in terms of review, the derivative of the natural log absolute value of x is what? What is the derivative of natural log absolute value of x? Is it 1 over x? 1 over x. Which is also known as x to the negative 1. I just want to point that out. however you want to see it. You should hopefully see these as the same thing. Therefore, therefore, the integral of 1 over x dx, which is the same thing as the integral of x and negative 1 dx. We just don't usually write it like that. We're just going to say the integral of 1 over x dx is equal to what? Remember, derivative is the integrand. They just go backwards and forwards. So what's the integral of 1 over x dx? And then absolute value of x, and then plus c. And there's your rule. Don't forget the absolute values. The absolute value is very important because 1 over x, the domain is all real numbers except x equals 0. So the integral would be natural log absolute value of x. We have to have those absolute value symbols there. If you don't, on the AP exam, this does happen on a free response question almost every year. If you forget those net absolute value symbols, you'll get it wrong. Now, there will, you will see it's some multiple choice questions and you'll go, hey, man, there's no absolute value symbol, so therefore it's wrong. I do want to note that if you got like x squared, if it was natural log, and I mentioned this before in the course, but if it was natural log absolute value of x squared, well, x squared is already always positive, so the absolute value symbol doesn't do anything. So therefore, you could kind of erase the absolute value symbols if what was being absolute valued was always positive, like an x squared or x squared plus 1 type of issue.
the integral of 1 over u du, well, first off is the integral, which you're going to end up doing almost all the time, is the integral of u to the negative 1 du, and it's perfectly fine if you do it like this, is going to be what? Will this one be ln absolute value of u and absolute value plus c? There you go. Because a lot of you would, um, I, I do the u to the negative 1 on this next one because basically when you see this type of problem, like as some of you have brought up, you're going to try to make it calculus friendly. All right? And so when you make it calculus friendly, you're going to end up getting like something u to the power of negative 1. So I, you, you know, in reality, you need to know that u to the negative 1 and 1 over u are the same exact thing. Like th that's the easiest way to fix any, any issue. So this one, these problems can feel a little bit trickier, but like I said, they, you just got to remember and be like, uh oh, the power rule doesn't work. And, and, in the, and then you have, you remember, oh yes, natural log, natural log. So for example, this is a problem that looks similar to a problem that we've done, but it's actually different. The integral of 3x squared plus 5x over 2x cubed dx. How do I integrate this? What if they could go 3 over 2 to the negative x? Uh, x to negative. You're missing something first, though. You're right, but because you're, you're missing something. Anybody tell her what she's missing? The integration sign? Yeah, so you haven't integrated yet, right? You're doing algebra. So when you're doing algebra, the integration symbol stays. So you were correct. It's, or I think you were saying three halves x to the negative one. Yeah, and then plus, and then we have five over one, or five to the. No, 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 no. Oh, not mine. 5 over 2 to the x to the negative 2. Perfect. Algebra, everybody. Algebra. All right. How did I get that? That is something that you need to know from an algebra standpoint. Basically dividing each term by 2x cubed when the, single, when the denominator is a single term. We do that. We've done many, many problems like that. You've got to feel comfortable doing that. And now we can integrate. All right, so what's the integral of 3 halves x to the negative 1? Um, is this one the transcendental thingy? It's transcendental, yes. It is? Mm-hmm. Oh, because if you do negative 1 plus 1, you get 0. So it won't work. And then, then you get... Yeah, get three over two all over mm -mm. zero or something like that. No, no, no. It's a transcendental, which means you don't do the plus one method. Anybody else want to chime in? Basically, if, if you haven't done it, you can rewrite this like this. So let me not integrate yet. We can say that's this. Now, my hope is that you don't have to separate it. I mean... Once again, a right answer is better than a wrong answer. So even though it takes you longer, it's better to get a longer answer that takes you that gives you the right one rather than trying to be fast and not get it right. So we can break this up into two integrals. So that gives me three halves times what? This is just what we just learned. Ellen. Ellen. To the absolute value of x. Natural log absolute value of x. Good. Plus and five halves. And this one would be oh, is it two though? So what would be ln? Nope, 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 nope. Only one that's ln is the negative one. It's only that one specific one. Now it's power roll. Oh, okay, so. One plus one, you get, I guess, times negative one. 
and then x, and then you have the power of negative 1 plus e. And that's my answer. Of course, I can clean that up a little bit and do 3 halves, natural log, add to the value of x, minus 5 halves. Yeah, um, you know, I could put over 2x. I'm just going to leave it as negative 1. If you want to write it as 5 over 2x, you can do that as well. The integral of e to the x over e to the x plus 1 dx. Now, I told you 9 times out of 10. What you think you need to do, or it's, at least you should you should be thinking that this is what you need to do, is what you need to do. So what do I do on this problem? Okay, so that gives me the integral of e to the x times what? Would it be e to the power of x plus 1 all to the power of negative 1 dx? Perfect. So therefore, I can probably identify what I need to do a little bit easier now. And would your u equal e to the power of x plus 1? Good. So du is equal to? Your du is equal to e to the power of x times dx. So this is my du. And this is my u. So now I get the integral of you get u to the power of negative one du. Perfect. This is our new transcendental one. So this gives me um. You said this is a transcendental one. Mm -hmm. This is the the transcendental. Power rule doesn't work here. So, and this is a memorization almost. This one should just be like, oh, that's that new one. That's that special case. That's basically. So it's like ln to the u? No. Uh, ln and then. Um, oh, would, your, would it be ln and then like absolute value or something and then e? Mm, mm, don't jump, Sorry. don't jump. Okay, um. Anybody else want to chime in? Natural log, absolute value. Of you. Of you. Plus okay. So natural log, absolute value, e to the x plus 1, plus absolute value, plus c. Now, it should be noted e to the x plus 1 is always greater than 0. Therefore, you could write your answer as the natural log of e to the x plus 1 plus c. So the, the absolute value symbols, you might see this in a multiple choice. You might not see the absolute value symbols and don't think that that's a wrong answer because it's still technically correct because e to the x plus 1 is something that is always positive. Um, basically, just you know, there's there's lots of different problems. I, I'm not gonna just give you problem after problem after problem. Um, you know, I've been giving you some new stuff. So here's kind of the plan that I've made. Okay, tonight is a homework handout. You're gonna work uh, on these types of problems. I think I put like six of them. You're gonna work on these ones, and you're gonna be like, all right, I don't feel comfortable enough yet, and I'm gonna know that, right? Tomorrow we're gonna go into the next unit. Tomorrow, we're not, it's not the next unit. It's still kind of what, of what we're doing. Um, but we're going to go on to the next lesson tomorrow. All right. It'll be very different than what we, it'll feel like it's very different than right here, but there, there is a connection that will come. Monday, I'm out. So on Monday, we're going to kind of get another review of practice day um, during when, for asynchronous of, of today's and yesterday's work. So you are going to get a follow up assignment to this. So you're going to have it tonight, and then you're going to also have it on Monday. All right. So I just want to give you that heads up. Um, in, in regards to our plan for Monday as well. Um, with that, that's what I have for you for today. Um, I'm going to cut, cut us off a little early. I think you guys earned it or need it. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Come to tutoring.